Hello, everyone. Uh, so this is our first lecture. Um, so today we will talk uh, briefly about what is a spatial data. Um, so because we will use GRS and we will learn how to use GRS, uh, GRS for this entire semester. So uh, uh, it is essential that we, we have a very basic understanding of the spatial data. Um, and also we will talk about what is GRS uh, and also how GRS um, handle two types of data. Um, and we also will talk about the coordination system. So that is uh, we, uh, the framework that organizes the data in GRS. Um, and those are very important concepts and we all use those, uh, practice those concepts um, in this week's lab. Okay, so first, uh, GRS. So this class is titled uh, Introduction to GRS. So GRS stands for Geographic uh, Information System. Uh, so as now we are using uh, a lot of uh, GPS enabled devices like our cell phones. Um, so we have a huge amount of the spatial data. Uh, we know the activities, the locations of um, uh, people. We know the locations of our cars, and we know locations of uh, a lot of entities or objects on the Earth. Uh, so those reaching those huge amount of in, uh, spatial information can help us understand the world better. So. GRS is such type of the information technology that can help us understand and also relate to those like what, when, how, and why questions of the world by answering where. So specifically that the spatial data. Okay, uh, so GRS focus on analyzing spatial data and especially that GRS actually integrate spatial data with an attribute data. Um, so here's attribute data we call, uh, we, we, means, we mean those non-spatial data. So um, there are two type of data that we can handle in GIS. One is spatial data. So those are the, talking about the position uh, of those objects on the surface of the earth. Uh, and also those non-spatial data. Uh, so such as uh, characteristics, or the qualities of the features. Uh, so those are not uh, including the spatial locations. Uh, the non-spatial information, for example, that a building that has a footprint on the earth. So those the footprint will be the spatial information. So where exactly is that building located? It can be an address. It can be the latitude or the longitude uh, of the building. Uh, we also have those non-spatial information. Uh, for example, the name, the name of the building. So, um, and also the function, and the type of the building, um, and also what people are using um, that building. So those are those non-spatial data. All those attributes. Okay. Um, so in this lab, in this week's lab, you are seeing that. GRS actually organize different types of spatial data in different layers. Um, uh, so here we have the real world. Okay, uh, it has buildings, rivers, um, and other roads. So we separate those information into different layers. So for example, we put the land use in one layer so that uh, organize the land use, and we put the streets. Uh, all the parcels and the streets into another layer. So those are focused on the different other objects. Uh, we put elevation into another layer and also we put human uh, people into uh, the top layer so that we can uh, integrate all those layers together and we can analyze for specific spatial data and also for specific non-spatial data. Okay. Um, Uh, so spatial data is special. So you may heard this one a lot. So why it is special? Um, 
So let's say uh, what type of spatial data we have and also what type of non-spatial data we have. So in GRS, the non-spatial data are those attribute data. So uh, those data, um, we have learned those data in statistics. So for example, like the, based on the scales of the measurement, uh, we know that the data can be ratio, interval, ordinal, or nominal. Uh, so nominal means that the different categories like A, uh, class A, type A, type B, or the colors, red, green, etc. So those are the nominal data. The ordinal data means that there is an order uh, uh, in those data, like for example, the high, low, okay, uh, and number one, number two, okay. Uh, so faster, slower, so there is an order in those data, so those are called nominal data. Um, the interval data and also the ratio data, they are all numbers, so like 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay, uh, so the difference between interval and the ratio is that so whether or not the ratio will make sense or not, um, and also whether or not the zero will make sense. So do they have a true zero? Okay, so if they the if we have a true zero, then that is the ratio data, and if there is no true zero, then it is an interval data. Okay, so so now I have a question. So if we look at the temperature, okay, so. Uh, the degree of the temperature. So is temperature uh, interval data or the ratio data? Okay, uh, so the temperature is interval data because the zero degree just means that it is one degree lower than <laughs> one degree. Um, but it, it, it does not mean that uh, the one zero degree means that the temperature does not exist. Okay, so the temperature is interval data. So the ratio data for example, the distance. Okay, so one mile, two miles. So two miles is twice longer as one mile. And if we see zero mile, so that means there's nothing in terms of the distance, in terms of the length. Okay, so that's the ratio data. Uh, so when we talk about the spa spatial data, uh, so there are mainly two types of spatial data. Uh, so the first one is called vector data. Uh, for example, the GPS, GPS data, the LiDAR, the ship files. So those are the most common um, vector data. We also have the raster data. Okay, so like the satellite images, air photos. So those are the most common um, raster data. So we'll talk about those two types of data in the following weeks. Okay, so as I mentioned that, so now especially that the, the GPS are very, very popular. So um, this, um, this statement is like five years ago that uh, IBM said that 80% of the data that has the spatial and also temporal attributes. Okay, so the majority of the data has spatial temporal attributes. Okay, so that's why that GRS is now becoming more and more popular. Okay.